So one of the problems with many modern therapists and modern therapies is that it's very similar to fighting a hydra. You see a problem, you cut off the head, but within very little time that head grows back and sometimes it will even grow back as two heads. And the more heads you see, the more you start chopping, but the more money you waste, the more time you waste, and the more complex and bewildering the array of problems will be. So just focusing on the now and focusing on the manifest problem uh, will give you very quick results, uh, but if you don't manage to resolve the underlying problem or the underlying problem doesn't manage to resolve itself, uh, then those the temporary reprieve you're giving the client by either medicating them or uh, solving the problems in another way on the short term will simply re-manifest either in the same or in a different form. So the opposite is of course to try to go to the source, but this is a little bit like wading through a swamp. And you can easily get stuck, you can sink back and you can easily get lost in the mist. Or to follow the little lights in the swamp and to get completely lost. So unfortunately like really deep long-term therapy is not always the solution either, neither is short-term therapy. As a therapist you have to become aware of where does your skill lie. Are you good at chopping off heads? Chop off heads. Are you good at really ferreting out the essence? Ferret out the essence. Do that. And depending on your skill you should also know the limits of what you can do or what you cannot do and how you work. We're not supposed to be able to solve every problem we encounter. We have to learn what is our niche and by knowing our niche we can also advertise ourselves as such and if our energy stabilizes in that configuration you also attract people who need your skills, who need you. Instead of like, yeah, just flipping through the yellow pages and picking a person at random. And recognizing in a way who should be your client and who shouldn't be your client can be very helpful in not wasting your time or your client's time. And usually within two or three sessions I will know whether like me and the client have a future or not and I will tell them either to stay and to keep working with me or simply to go away because it's not working out. The tricky thing here is of course reputation and money because if you send away clients dissatisfied they will tend to complain about you and say that you're a horrible therapist who can't help them and they wasted their time and their money on you and la di yada yada. So it will harm you. Also if you send away your client and yeah, they still have a problem, then yeah, you're not making money out of treatments. But ultimately it is a choice. Of course you have to be able to survive, your business has to be able to survive. But also you don't want to waste your life, waste your time, waste your energy and that of your client by yeah, in a way, keeping them going endlessly without making any progress. Uh, because then you're in a way just a parasite who is sucking their time, sucking away their energy and not giving anything back really which is worthwhile to them. Um, some clients are used to this, some clients want this, they just want to get your attention, they just want to share their story, um, but this is not therapy. This is just them taking center stage and playing around with themselves and getting attention and feeling empowered by it because they're paying you, they're in control. But this is not really a solution. Um, so clients who want that, who want me to fix their problems, who want me to listen to them, or want me to give them attention or sympathy, 
or whatever, I'm not really interested in working with them. Uh, because I consider my time and my energy to be more valuable than that. And I'd rather make my money in different ways. But there are plenty of therapists who are quite okay with just sitting around, clocking the time and forgetting all about their clients once they're gone. Because ultimately it is also no use trying to figure out their problems or to give them good advice because they're not really interested in that and they might actually shy away from that from clients, from uh, therapists who are confronting them. What's also important is that you try to find um, a depth which your client is comfortable with. Not all clients are comfortable with looking at it from a karmatic perspective or um, as seeing their own problems as being inherited from their parents um, or from their previous lives. For some people this is too much hocus pocus. Um, some people are also not willing to go back to their youth even because they think it's over and done with. We're dealing with the problem which is here and now, not with what happened 20 or 30 years ago. So clients can be quite unwilling to regress to the source of the problem. And often you have to take them step by step backwards and try to help them to see the pattern and find the source of the pattern. So often the source of the pattern, if you're going back, is a developmental problem. In an ideal case, by the time we're 25, we have developed a perfect personality and we can deal with everything because we are strong, we are wise, we have self-discipline, we have love, we have understanding. Well, I don't know how many people you've met who at the age of 25 are like this, but uh, I haven't met very many if any. <laughs> so um, this is not a normal thing to hatch perfectly uh, from the age of 25 and then to be completely prepared for problems which might manifest later in life. So realistically speaking we have hundreds of issues of things which are malformed or haven't had time or the support or the right circumstances to develop. And the rest of our lives are generally just um, an attempt at dealing with these deficiencies. Sometimes we can deal with these deficiencies in a very definitive manner. Okay, I didn't get it when I was a kid, but I'm able to get it now and thereby transform myself so I will never need it anymore in the future. Uh, but often we're in a way just um, repeating uh, the trauma, the lack of something which then becomes a pattern in our future. Like you might not have gotten enough support or recognition of your achievements when you were young and the rest of your life you spent looking for that recognition by being focused on your career, by being focused on um, maybe having a lot of attention from the opposite sex, uh, by always being perfectionistic and always trying to excel at everything. Um, and yeah, you can become very neurotic because of this. And it all because in the first 25 years of your life you didn't get enough recognition and support the rest of your life you're looking for it. So knowing that there are hundreds of these problems and issues which usually determine um, what will happen and how will we, we experience the rest of our lives, it is still quite a daunting task to in a way track back and to see the patterns which are reoccurring. Usually by the time a client comes to look for help, it is not the first time something has happened to them. And what tends to happen is that problems grow over time. So what is a small problem at first tends to expand 
both within the person to more and more levels but also outside it tends to grow and grow because ultimately this growth this expansion will allow the person to focus more of their energy more of their time on resolving the problem and ultimately this energy is necessary to in a way gather enough attention to in a way resolve the problem to create the change so what is seen as a very negative thing like spiraling out of control uh, is actually just you're gathering resources and you're allocating them um, to helping yourself develop it's important also to aid your client in seeing it in that way in seeing like how they have in a way not just suffered or become more lost things but in a way they've reallocated them to solving the problem and usually when enough resources have been reallocated then the person will really feel it is time to solve it it is time to do something about it and at earlier points you might try to intervene or to try to help but the person might simply not be ready yet and they might need a further escalation or further experiences with um, the trauma to be able to ready to uh, to be able to resolve it to get ready to make the necessary changes to make the necessary steps and this can be a very difficult thing as a therapist and you have to be honest it's also one of my mistakes i tend to want to resolve problems i'm not very patient and i'm not comfortable with allowing my clients to suffer more so i tend to try to intervene too quickly to resolve the problem before the person is ready and then ultimately the problem needs to be manifest uh, and the person will become even more demotivated because they thought they got rid of the problem it was getting better and now the problem is there again larger than life and if I would have realized this explained it to them um, then they would have simply been prepared so the proper way to deal with it is step one tell them what the pattern is, what they're working on and also allow them to see that they're just in an expansion pattern that's when something happens to them several times they're just allocating resources, building their understanding and building their skills in making the change in transforming themselves and once the client has accepted that, you can start working together on resolving it, on really um, tracking down the problem and eliminating the root cause, which is usually within the first 25 years of life, and then creating a more stable coping mechanism. And the good news is that usually when problems really get big enough, but also the change tends to go very very deeply and becomes a change really of the spirit which it will be able to take on uh, uh, in next incarnations as well so even though the step might be a very big step it is also a very fundamental step a lesson they will remember forever rather than just resolving the problem very quickly, dealing with the symptoms very quickly so the problem is out of the person's life but things disappearing from your life doesn't mean that your spirit has also transformed so there are benefits to really spending a lot of time and struggle uh, with the problem and allowing your client to see it that way is really beneficial they're not just ignoring problems and fleeting through life like a zigzag course, a slalom race, avoiding everything. But they're really grabbing the problem by the horns, wrestling with it. And ultimately this leads to real knowledge, real wisdom, real power. So I hope that uh, this has been helpful. and. We'll get more in-depth with the next videos.